those are secrets. I can store everything in Git except secrets. Sure, you would get fired, probably. That would be, well, awful. Everything we do is in Git. What are you doing, Victor? Are you using Git? I mean, of course you are using Git. Uh, if you're not, then you're in a wrong channel. You, you're probably interested in fashion advice or, I don't know, some hobby site. But you are here because you're a software engineer and you are using Git. And hopefully you're moving your way of operating stuff to be based on GitOps. You're probably using one of the GitOps tools like Argo CD or Flux to manage the synchronization between what is defined in Git and what is the actual state in your clusters. If you're confused and you don't know what GitOps is, then the link is above. Go check it out and it explains what GitOps is and uh, afterwards you can check out Flux and Argo CD. But all that doesn't matter really because you are storing stuff in Git. You're storing manifests of your deployments, you're storing your source code and so on and so forth. What you're probably not storing those are secrets because that would be silly, right? It would be silly to store your passwords and authentication tokens and what's not in Git, right? That would be insecure. You would get fired probably. So what are you doing? Are you using HashiVault? Are you using secrets managers from AWS Azure or Google or something like that? But wait, let's go back for a second. Why are you not storing everything in Git, including secrets. Is it too dangerous? Is it insecure? Will you get fired? Now, what if I tell you that Git can be the full, the complete source of truth of the desired state of everything, including secrets? What if I tell you that we can and we should store secrets in Git and that you will not get fired because of that? And what if I tell you that that happens to be probably the best way to treat manifests, including secrets, and at the same time very secure? And one more thing. What if we can make all that be very easy? Wouldn't that be tempting? Let's explore how we can store everything in Git. I mean, you know how to store everything in Git. But how we can include secrets together with everything else you're storing in Git. And we are going to use sealed secrets from Bitnami to do just that. So what do we need? We need a Kubernetes cluster. This is, did I mention, this is going to be about storing secrets that are used in Kubernetes, not somewhere else. There are solutions, non-Kubernetes solutions, but today it's going to be about Kubernetes. And you probably noticed almost everything is about Kubernetes today. So we need a Kubernetes cluster, create one. Create a Kubernetes cluster right away if you don't have one. I will be using, what am I using today? Yes, I will be using Minikube. It could be Docker Desktop, it could be GKE, EKS, AKS, anything you want, a Kubernetes cluster. I assume that you have kubectl and we will need two more things uh, beyond the obvious. One is kubectl uh, CLI. I will provide the link to the kubectl project from where you can install kubectl uh, CLI. So that's the one kubectl, let's say help, right? I have already that CLI installed. So install kubectl CLI and the instructions are on the project page and the link to the project page is in the gist which is in the description of this video. And one more thing, we need one more thing and that is to install the controller inside of the cluster. You will see what it's good for, why do we want controller for now, just install it. Again, the instructions are in the, in the gist. So kubectl apply and then the path to the controller that is stored in the Git repository of the project. And there we go. No, not yet. One, two, three, there we go. Controller is installed. You can ignore the warnings. Uh, they will be, they will disappear at some moment. Anyways, the controller is installed and now we can explore how we can store secrets in Git using cube seal, using sealing secrets before storing them in Git so that they are safe and that we can solve one of the big problems of GitOps and that is how do I store secrets? I can store everything in Git except secrets. Well, not after this video. So let's explore cube seal in 20 minutes. 
or less. What is the problem in the first place? Let's define the problem. So let's say that we need to have a secret in our Kubernetes cluster. How would we normally deal with that? That would be something like this, cube, cuttle, dash dash namespace. Where do we want to store that secret? Let's say in the default namespace, we want to create secret. And uh, let's say that this time it's going to be generic and uh, it's going to be called my secret. And what else? I will not create it directly in my cluster. I could, that's what most people do, but I don't wanna do that because I want to store that secret in my Git repository to together with the rest of the manifests of this imaginary application. So I cannot store, cannot create it directly in, in Kubernetes cluster because that would be, well, awful. I'm not supposed to manage my Kubernetes cluster directly. I should store all the manifests in Git. So I will do dry run to demonstrate what happens. Dry run equals client. And what else? Uh, let's say that we are going to generate a secret from literal value. That can be other ways to create Kubernetes uh, secrets. So from literal and it's going to be foo equals bar. The silly, silly, silly example. And then I'm going to output. So this is not creating anything in my cluster. Uh, this is a dry run and I'm going to output it. Uh, oh, I'm missing dash dash. Output as JSON, right? So let's see the manifest. This will create the manifest for us that we can store in Git. Now, if we do this, if we would now store this in a file and push it to Git, then everybody would know that the secret of foo, here it is, is YMFY. Now this might sound like it's encrypted, but it, I mean it is, but this is base64 encryption. This is future me recording later. It's not base64 encryption, it is base64 encoding. So whenever you hear me saying base64 encryption, I wanted to say encoding, but I'm too lazy to record the whole video again. So this is me correcting myself later. Base64 encoding, not encryption. Anybody can, um, can decrypt this uh, by using base64 decryption. So, uh, now that we saw how we can create a secret, very quickly, let's uh, say that we want to store it in Git. We cannot store this file, this file, this would be silly, uh, because this can be easily decrypted. We are going to seal it first. So let's see how we can do that. What is the easiest way to seal a secret? Encrypt it in a way that nobody can decrypt it. Nobody can figure out what the secret is without decrypting it and nobody can decrypt it without having access to our cluster, so it's relatively safe. And one more thing, you will not get fired. You will not lose your job uh, for doing what I'm doing. So we're going to seal the secret. How do we do that? I'm going to pipe this, um, this definition, this secret that is easily readable to cube seal. And then I'm going to store the output in the file my secret. Uh, this is safe. You will see soon why it is okay to store it in a file this time and it wasn't uh, before. So this is what we got this time. Now this is almost the same as what we had before except that the value of foo is now this. Now you cannot base64 decrypt this. Uh, I mean, you can try to decrypt it, but you will not get anything meaningful. So we have a file that has a secret, but secret is encrypted. And what we can do now, we can say kubectl create dash dash. Imagine, stop, 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 stop. Let me stop myself. What are you doing, Victor? Imagine that we pushed now this to git. Imagine that. I'm not going to push it to Git because there is no reason you, you have Im imagination big enough to imagine it. So we push the secret to Git and now some GitOps tool like uh, Argo CD or Flux will, would deploy that secret to our cluster. But I didn't want to complicate it today. So I'm going to apply this secret directly to the cluster, even though you shouldn't be doing it. You shouldn't modify the state of your cluster directly. So 
I'm going to create a secret uh, that is stored in that file. Remember, this is now sealed secret. This is not secret that can be encrypted by anybody but but who? Yes, but kubeseal controller that is already running in the cluster, the one that we installed before. So uh, kubectl create and then file name is going to be mysecret.yaml. And now this secret is created in a cluster. But it's not the same as what you see here in a file. It's not the same. Kubeseal decrypted this and stored it in a cluster. So in other words, we are encrypting manifests that can be decrypted only by the controller running in a cluster. So only those who have access to specific namespace and specific resources in our cluster can, can decrypt this secret. And in this case, it was decrypted automatically. You will see soon how and why that happened. But for now, what is important is that we have two things. We created two things. One is the manifest that contains the secret that is encrypted, that is sealed, and can be safely stored in a Git repository. And the other thing that happened is that when we created a secret inside of the cluster, that secret was encrypted when it entered the cluster, and then kubeseal decrypted it and provided to our resources decrypted secret, the real secret, the one that is um, that should be used by our applications. And for that, the definition that kubeseal created out of the normal, let's say, definition is slightly different. But the, so instead of having the secret, instead of creating the secret itself, we're creating seal secret, and then Bitnami seal secrets decrypted that secret inside of the cluster. You will see soon how that happened and why that happened. Actually, as a matter of fact, let's take a quick look now what we got in a cluster. So if I do kubectl get secret, remember we did not create a secret, we created sealed secret that is encrypted and then kubeseal converted it into real secret, whatever that means. So if we say kubectl get secret, my secret, my secret, and the uh, output, let's say is YAML, this is what we got. Where is it? Where is it? Should be somewhere at the top. Here we go. Data foo equals YMFY, which is base64, but not really sealed secret. So we created a cube seal secret. We stored it in Git, or supposed we stored it in Git. We created that resource in a Kubernetes cluster and then kubeseal made sure that it is decrypted. And we can see that the real secret is created for us by kubeseal. The data has the key and the value that is base64 encoded because that's how Kubernetes secrets work. And is there anything? Yes. And there is another thing. Here you go. Here we can see that owner references are pointing to Bitnami a controller called sealed secret. So from now on, this secret is not managed by us. It is managed by Bitnami, a Bitnami sealed secrets. And we are creating sealed secrets and not secrets anymore. And they're safe to be stored in, in Git. So uh, let's confirm that. If I output this secret again, but this time as, uh, what should I output? JSON, but, right? And uh, the value can be, let's take a look at data foo, the key that we stored. And uh, we're going to, what is the output? The output is this YMFY, but if we base 64 uh, decoded, and maybe add an empty line at the bottom, we see that the value is bar. That is the value that uh, we created initially, that is sealed. All we have to do is pass secrets through kubeseal CLI that converts those manifests into cube sealed secrets that are saved to be stored in Git. And then we can apply them in a cluster one way or another, whichever tool you're using. And that's, that's all there is. It's as simple as it can get, but very safe. Nobody, and I repeat, nobody can and decrypt, unseal your secrets, except those 
who have access to your Kubernetes cluster. There is not much more to say about sealed secrets. They are simple and simplicity is a good thing. But don't think that because it's simple, it's not good. It's excellent. It, it is a missing piece towards GitOps path, towards being able to define everything, literally everything, and store in Git. Without some way to seal, to encrypt secrets and store them in Git, we cannot say that we are applying GitOps. We cannot say that the source of truth is in Git. The best we can do is say, hey, Git is the source of truth for everything except secrets. With a solution similar, like Bitnami sealed secrets or something like that, we can say, hey, everything we do is in Git. And this was the missing piece. This, is, this was missing from the whole idea about the full desired state being stored in Git. A missing piece that is very welcome. Now with sealed secrets or something similar, you can finally say that Git is the complete, full, ultimate source of truth, the source of the desired state, everything is stored in Git. And then you can use Flux or Argo CD, hey, links are above somewhere, to manage your deployments, your state from Git into your cluster. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Is there anything else? Can I say anything else interesting about this? This is going to be the shortest video ever. I love the idea that there is nothing I can talk beyond five minutes about the technology. And that technology is awesome. Brilliant.